Hey Instagram, how you doing? Welcome to the July episode of The Office and today is an exciting day, an exciting interview. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, you know at the beginning of The Office, we do one underground artist and one small business and I'm going to always plug in Angel Wing Sauce. Y'all be sure to go check out angelwingsauce.com. Um, to take care of all your hot sauce needs, uh, we make the best hot wing sauce ever made. So don't miss out on that. Be sure, be sure to go over to angelwingsauce.com, okay? Um, and secondly, we usually do a, um, a underground artist, but today we're not doing an underground artist. We have something even better. Just one moment. Okay, I'm back, Instagram. Sorry for that pause. But today we have a special, special guest. <laughs> and I am so honored that she is here today. We have Miss Corinne Cannon. Hello, Miss Corinne. How you doing? Oh, how are you today? I'm so great. And I'm so, again, I've said it a thousand times today, but I'm so grateful that you allowed me to come to your home to interview you. Because you are a special woman. Thank you. Yes, and I look up to you. I admire you. I've read your story. Um, I've read several articles about you, but I get to sit here and ask myself. This is a blessing. So thank you again. Um, and so, yes, you're on Instagram Live. Now, this is going to be a first, Miss Cannon, because you are, is it 102 years old? 102 in about three weeks. Three months, one week, in a couple of days, I'll be 103. Mm powerful so you've lived what 10 decades a whole century yeah you've been around you you know some things so it's just uh amazing to be in your presence to hear the wisdom and uh the experience that you've seen in this lifetime i've been quite a few yes ma'am and so uh if i don't know everybody well i'm introducing you to miss cannon today she is the first black woman to be hired in a production mill in the United States, the first black woman, guys, this is a huge deal. And this happened in what year, Miss Cannon? 1963. 1963. Yes. And so uh, that was when the Jim Crow era was really... Really bad. Yes. Really, really bad. And also, Miss uh, Cannon, she has, you said, 30 uh, other oh, grandchildren. Yeah great-grandchildren, but she is also the grandmother of Mr. Infamous Nick Cannon. So she has birthed uh, greatness and has a big family of successful successful people. Is that correct? Thank you. Yes. yes. That is amazing. Um, and so, you know, everybody knows this stuff about you that we read, but from your from your mouth, because I got you here today, Miss Lovely Corinne Cannon. Who is Corinne Cannon? And from your words. I am Korean Cannon, Korean Lytle Cannon, born in the Cabarrus in Mecklenburg County. I was raised up in, well, when I was in the two counties, my, my our house was on the line. The front of the house was in Mecklenburg County, mm -hmm. and the, the back of the house was in the Cabarrus. Mm. If, you know, if you've ever been to Cabarrus County, you know uh, coming up, uh, into Mecklenburg on your own proper tent road. Is that by Chapel Hill, Caribbean County? No, this is coming up. It's uh, from between Concord and, uh, it used to be Concord and Davidson now, but I would think we did think about it. It's Concord, between Concord and uh, Huntersville. Okay. I don't think I've been in quite that area. It was about, a, about 20 minutes, 20 or 25 minutes from Charlotte. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That's where I was born and raised. I've been in this area all of my life, all of 102 years mm -hmm. I've been in this area. I've been around. I've been in uh, quite a bit of the 
United States and around and places. Mm -hmm. So I, I just didn't come to Cabarrus County and, and stay there. Mm -hmm. And I've done a lot of things. And like I said, I had children. I had a family of children. I had uh, seven of my own, and I reared uh, eight children. And uh, they all, all of my children, I tried to get them all through with some type of degree. And uh, we did a lot of the first. Um, my oldest was the first Afro American to work in uh, as a as a firefighter wow. and went with, the, with the Navy. Oh wow! And then my daughter was the first uh, to be in uh, to ever be in, ordained in the Presbyterian Church as a minister. And then she she passed a few years ago. Oh. She was a f professor at the Union Theological Seminary in Richmond. Okay, and what was her name? Katie Geneva. Katie, yes, Katie I Cameron. see Miss Katie the Cameron. The name is sort of famous. Yes, right? she was very, she was very prominent. She did a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is there anything else? It's a yeah. lot to you, a lot, well, to, a lot I, of layers to my you. My older daughter taught, she's retired now. She uh, taught for about 45 years. Okay. And my younger one did too, she's retired. Um, Sarah did most of my, my oldest daughter. She did most of her teaching in North Carolina. Doris Cannon Love. Okay. That's Sarah Cannon Fleming. And, uh, and the other Doris Cannon Love did, did her work mostly in the state of Virginia. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you 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 created a big family. Yeah, my, my foster daughter. Okay. Just retired since Christmas, and she was a, a librarian. Okay. She graduated from Spelman. So oh. we were about it, right? And what year did she graduate from Spelman? Don't what? ask me that. <laughs> I don't remember. I remember she graduated from Spelman, and I've had so many. And at my age, I have to. I have to have everything written down. So okay. I can keep going. Okay. I don't want to tell you wrong. No problem. It's no mm -hmm. problem at all. I. I mm -hmm. It, we'll chuck it up too. Everybody's done something, so that's enough. For, and at the present, my youngest child is a, the Reverend Dr. Jerry L. Cannon from yes. C.N. Jenkins Presbyterian Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yes, ma'am. He called me. That's He was the one that called. Oh, yeah. Yes. So you have a huge family, and they've all done prominent things. Yeah. Everybody, we've always, I have a granddaughter and so. Doctor's degree in law. She, she's an attorney. She works at uh, Emory down in Atlanta now. What is it called? Is it a college? Yes, yeah, a college. It's Emory. A college. Emory. Okay. I don't think. I think it's. I think it's a Methodist. Okay. University of Emory, Emory University. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Wow. And she graduated from uh, Ohio State. You take you guys take college very very seriously. Very seriously. Yes, mm -hmm. I noticed that very very seriously. Um, all right. Now we know that you were at uh, like I mentioned, you were the first black woman to be hired at the production mill, and that production mill you got hired at was called Cannon Mills yeah. here in uh, Kannapolis, correct? Yes. Now your last name is Cannon, and as I was driving in, I saw in this city there's a lot of Cannon. Mm -hmm. uh, names of businesses and things like that. Is there any correlation to your last name and you being working at that Cannon Mills? Yes, I I was coming. I was born Corinne Lytle. Okay. And I married Esau Cannon, mm. who was a twin. Uh, Jacob. Jacob and Esau. <laughs> yes, Jacob and Esau. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, their children all were had degrees and went to college. Mm. And all of mine did. So we um, got to know names, make names for our children. Mm. But the, the, during the years of slavery, the four parents of the cannons all belonged to the, to the cannon. And we still keep that connection, not as a slave uh, master uh, uh, area, but the uh, Right now, we are still friends with the grandparents of Charles, Charles A. Cannon. Mm. 
So that family owned a lot of stuff here in Kannapolis? Yeah. Well, not in Kannapolis. At, at that time, there was no Kannapolis. Okay. Mm -hmm. What was it here? What was this called back in those this times? Is, this is a cotton fields. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. The cotton fields. And what yeah. year did you meet Esau? Do you remember? Oh, I met Esau when I was about 13, 14 years old. 13, 14. Mm -hmm. So that would have been 19, about 19... Uh, 26? Yeah. 1926? Yeah. You were born in 1912? Uh, no, I was born in 1919. 1919, okay. I was, I was about 12, 13 years old. You do the math. Yeah, so you so you met him at probably about, you were like uh, 31. 9 plus 2, that's 1, and then bring the 1. You were about 31. 13. No, I mean, that was 1931, I'm sorry. That was in 1931. Yes, okay. And you were 12. Yeah, 12 or 13. 12 or 13. And how old was Esau? He must have been seven years older than me because he was seven years older than me. Okay. So, so we, were, we were all friends. He lived on Papa Tent Road with 92, but it was about, two, about three or four, maybe five miles but different. Coming from Corn Corn going into Davidson at that time. Okay. Davidson, not right. How did y'all meet, you and Esau? Well, children. Then we would meet at the church. Our churches used to have uh, um, children day services. We, uh, all the children from one church. He came from Bethpage uh, Presbyterian Church, and I went at that time from Columbus Chapel and Zion Church. Mm -hmm. But it made no difference because you always had ten people at all the churches in the area. Okay. And the first time I met him was at a church. Gotcha. How, so y'all knew for sure y'all weren't related. No, no, no. No, I was a Korean Lytle. Lytle, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those, so you knew for sure that they had no connection. No, I didn't. That family, we were in over on, uh, several miles from Another, the Another, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So that name, but, Cannon, that production mill, does that have anything to do with your last name? The fact that, that you, your last name is Cannon and that production No, that didn't have anything to nothing do with Nothing to do with you? No. Okay. There were hundreds and there was, well, at least I had 13 sisters and brothers, oh. and they had wives and had children. Mm -hmm. And do you believe it? All of them are passed and gone. The children are some, a few of the children are still here, but uh, mm. most of most of the, all of that Cannon family, my my in laws were named Dan Cannon mm -hmm. and Cora Weatherspoon Cannon. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was his wife. That was my husband. That was my in laws. Okay. And, their children are all pain. Mm. What what do you cause I know this is a cliche a cliche question, but what do you what was your secret? How did you last so long through so much? What do you feel like God it was? has been good to me. Mm -hmm. I get God the highest praise and all the praise because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. always trying to say mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Um, let's see here. Okay, I know I read about your grandmother. She was the first graduate, one of the first graduates of Barbara Scotia. That's when it was a seminary, seminary school? Yeah, uh, my, my grandma was, uh, there's a picture right there. Right here? Oh, wow. Can we show that in the camera? Yeah, yeah. Okay, just a moment. Let me go get that. That's a nice picture. Oh, she is beautiful. This is Miss Cannon's grandma. She was the first. Let me see if you guys can see. Oh, that's a beautiful picture of her, too. She was the first, one of the first graduates of Barbara Scotia College. It's Scotia Seminary. Seminary school back then. It was a seminary school when she went. But she's beautiful. Yes. Thank you. And... Can you tell us, Miss Cannon, why that was so important? When she, when she graduated back then, she was one of the first graduates. Why was that so important back in those times? That was right after that uh, happened, soon after freedom, after the, the slaves had been freed. And there was a minister from the North, a Presbyterian minister, Luke Darwin, mm -hmm. had a couple of white churches down this area. And he went to all, with all efforts 
to organize and get our schools for the free black women and men. So he named one Scotia Seminary, oh. and the other was Biddle, which is now John C. Smith. John C. Smith? And to, to help him to get started, mm -hmm. he, had a, he met a few of the other black people around in the area and had them help him to get students in. And my great-grandma was Polly Banjo. Polly Banjo. And she went from field to field and house to house recruiting young ladies. Oh. You know, whatever they, whatever, whatever area they was in, they met them at that area and told them. And uh, that, her, my grandmother's name, Martha Elizabeth Barrington. And she married, uh, her husband was John White. And to that family, they had two children. And uh, my grandma, as I say, passed at an early age. But she had a daughter named Anna Penilla, and she married a McConnell. And, and Rosa Penilla, that was my mama. Okay. She married Emilia Lyle. And you want you want that? Yes, you can. We can do it. Looking at them. All about you. Uh, this is their picture. Okay. Which way you want me to get it? Look the same way. Look on and look on this wall. Straight ahead right here? No. It's look, blue. They got the blue on? No, that's me. Oh. That's my mom and daddy up there. It's oh, me. right here. Okay. Oh, wow. This, now this. Wow. How did they get this painting? Did you guys get this revived? This is beautiful. And this is your parents, correct, Miss Candy? Yeah, that's my parents. That's Rose Ooh, and Lane. They are beautiful. How did y'all get this photo like this? I'm gonna come back in here and make sure I got these all straightened up for you before I love before I cut them. I'm gonna make sure. Now. Uh -huh. I didn't know you want me to tell you how I got it. Yes, go ahead. Um, that was my my daddy died in 1931, mm -hmm. and my mama didn't. My mama lived in 1975. Mm -hmm. 19 yeah, 1975. And I looked at those two pictures, and a, a Korean friend of ours, mm -hmm. uh, an artist, so he gave those pictures, and he put them together. And they exactly like my parents. You refreshed it, yeah. It looks so good. Like that. They are a nice looking couple, you know. Yeah. So, um, and you said so that was important because y'all, your grandma was like one of the first women that were allowed to go to college. Yeah. yeah. When the freedom time came. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's great. And she used to go. Um, you said your sister or your uh, who used to go door to door to my scout grandma. your my grandma. Mama. Okay. So that's amazing. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Why do you uh feel like education is so important? How come your family? Well, that's the way like out. Mm -hmm. Out of wherever you're in, if you if you know where you're going, you won't be so apt to fall back into where you are and where you don't want to be. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Education is power. Mm -hmm. It is power. It is. It's a, it's your road out. Yes. Now, can you walk us through, if you can remember, the first day that you walked into that production mill? Because back then, and this was in 63, correct? Mm -hmm. Women, black women, you could have been, you could have gotten in some big trouble for walking mm -hmm. in that mill that day. Mm -hmm. You had a lot of courage and a lot of gumption to do that. And I talk to you now. You seem like you're, you're, you're a fearless woman. Mm -hmm. You know, I admired that. What was it? Can you take us through that day of you walking into that meal to get that job and to tell them I'm going to work here? Can you tell us that day? Well, I didn't really walk in there that again. Okay. I heard, as the old saying by the way of the grapevine, that they were going to be hiring some. Oh. And I was saying, you're in this particular room. Really? And the telephone rang. Wow. 1963. Okay. And he said, we're going to speak to Corinne Cowles that's speaking. And then he says, uh, would I be interested in working in the mill? I said, uh, well, I don't know. 
They were telling. I said, I really don't know. I said, I'm not going, I wouldn't be interested in working as a custodian or anything like that. I said, but it depends on what I would, would be offered. Mm -hmm. He said, well, we've been searching around. It's, it's possible we're going to be hiring some of you all. And uh, he, I, want, I want you to, uh, your name was Pete. I said, well, thank you. And he says, uh, asked me a few questions about what I'd been doing and what I was doing then. And, uh, and he says, uh, do you know, you, uh, uh, well, we want you to come in in the morning. Come in, you can come in in the morning, prepare to work if, you, if you're if you arrested. I said, thank you. He said, do you know Mary Harris? I said, at the time, I couldn't think. I said, no, I don't know Mary. She said, well, we, we looked at another lady who lives near you, Mary. I said, oh, yes, I know who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, would you, would you bring her with you? Mm -hmm. That's the way I was hired. I didn't ask, and he offered to me, and he said, oh, but this is a trial, and uh, I think it's going to work out. I'll tell you right now, you've been, uh, you, we, we've been looking at you and uh, Mary Harris. Uh -huh. And I, I opened the door, jumped off the, I really, I don't think I stepped off the steps. I think I just jumped off the step. And she lived about, uh, about two blocks up the street there. Okay. And I ran up there. And when I told her that, she thought I was joking. I said, what you come to work in the mill? Come to work in the morning in the mill. She said, what mill? And we talked about it. Mm -hmm. So we got that, we got that next morning. We got, my husband got one of his friends to walk with us around to the, office, we call it the big office, that was a, uh, that's where, that's where was the big business went on in the big office. And we met there with Mr. A man named Freddie L. Wilson. Okay. And he told us, that's when he told us that he, he'd been hand-picked, mm. and we're going to see how this worked out, because it was something that had not been done. Mm. And he didn't know of any, anywhere, the reason I'm saying it was in a national thing, because he said he didn't know of anybody would be hired to work around the uh, a machine. So I, I we went, was hired to run waffle machines that was uh, work with the yarn and things and we would go to we go to the bleacher to be be shop and make cloth. To, okay. To be in. And he said if the now you you go you might meet some objections. You uh, people are gonna be looking at your phone if they say if they even look at you evil. Don't try it. Say, don't try to answer them or say anything. Let me know about it. Okay. He said, if we have to think about it, people that are able to handle things like that. Mm -hmm. He talked to and he talked and turned his back and was looking out the window. And he said, listen, if anything happens evil in this, uh, on this job, I want you all to stay here. Oh. If it happens, don't try to. to don't try to say it, just said, let me know about it. Okay. Wow. So he thanks us, and we went on. Uh, if somebody else came and got us and carried us down to the uh, mill side, they had different departments in, in the plant one. Okay. And uh, carried us down and showed us what we were supposed to do. Did but you explain? One thing, that, one thing that was really sad about it was mm -hmm. they had already built a separate restrooms, black and white. And as we walked in on one side of the door was a fountain, white water, and on the other side was black. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that I walked when I walked in there that uh, it's right. I, 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 I couldn't change my, but I made up in my mind, I won't be drinking black water for long. That's I right. won't be drinking water. Mm -hmm. So about the next week, and at that time they had to, Dope wagons, they called it. Because by that time, we had the restroom, uh, lunchrooms were open where you could go get your stuff out of the machine if you wanted to. Yeah, out of the vending machine. Out of the vending mm -hmm. machine. And at that time, they were making an outdoor outhouse. They called it a water house. Yes. And, uh, was that for the black people? Yeah, for black, mm. black, for black women. Mm. And, they hired four more. We worked. Uh, I worked there. Mary and myself worked that week out. In the next week, there were 
full, full blown. Yeah, full blown ladies game. And we worked two years right there before they hired, started to hire me. So. But we didn't go in for hour. That first two weeks, I believe, we worked hour with it. And then they were, we were making production. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure you did experience, did you experience some racist moments? Oh, yeah. People looked at you like that. What are you doing here? But in the morning, I went in, just like the fixture was there. I went in and I said, good morning, how's everybody? And if, it, and if I first started, some of them were there, uh, they would look back at me, you know, and grunt. Some, some I could hear say good morning, some didn't. Right. And uh, then I was, yeah, I said, I didn't hear you speak to me. I didn't speak with you last night. Ooh. And keep walking. You never look back for that. Right. And I didn't speak with you either. You know? How come you can't speak to me this morning? I haven't seen you already. Yeah. I always have a lot of talk. Yeah. And so people <laughs> too. Now, everybody was real nice. They were saying, Miss hey, Miss Karen, hey, Miss Karen. And I just, I just always, when I wanted to say something, and I thought it was going up upset them or something, then I just, uh, they tell me it was funny jokes. Uh-huh. Tell them their funny jokes, mm -hmm. and I said, oh, "What kind of what kind of people were those that was do, doing do that talk?" And they would say, "Oh, I know there was a lady named Florence. Mm -hmm. She was always had a little, little joke about some something, this, that, and other, you know." And I said, "Who, who were they?" And so the last one she told, she was telling us, so everybody was laughing. I said, now, who, who, what kind of people were they? She said, I think they were Chinese. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And that, that burned on that me, real quick. I never had no more problem about that. Okay, good. Ooh. So you had the favor of God on you, you and Miss Mary. Yeah, Her yeah, name is yeah, Mary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they, never, you know they have in the tabloids that you walked into the production mill and demanded. <laughs> they got your story. And I'm glad we were able to clear it up today. But they yeah. have different stories about you. And one of the stories say that you walked into the mill demanding a job. <laughs> no, I really didn't. Yeah. I really didn't. I was surprised and happy that I got it. Yeah. I was really at the beauty parlor. Mm -hmm. And this girl, Emma Kirkland was her name. She said, Miss Cooney, did you hear? She had heard about Susan. She had heard that my name was coming up. Mm -hmm. And then the, the night before, I got this telephone call. My husband said they called for him to come to the big office. And they said, what happened to the big office? And he said, ask somebody, super somebody, one of the supervisors, ask him would he care if his wife were in the, work in the mail. Okay. And he said, I don't know, you'll have to ask her. That's the very word. I don't know if you asked her. She, she, she'll answer him. Because mm -hmm. my husband knew me. <laughs> he knew I would answer him. Yes, he knew you were a strong woman. Yeah. You could answer for yourself. He mm -hmm. knew that. that. That's what he was saying. Yeah. And so he came home in the evening and tell me, so you know, I had to go out and call me. I got a call to come to the office. Then I went up, what did I have to go to the office for? Mm. That's like going to the Christmas office. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you and don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if, I, if I mind. And if it was, oh, was it possible for me to be free to come? And he showed me. Asked me, so I didn't get the call to be asked. I just got the call to come to me. I knew wow. quite a few. I knew quite a few people in Canapas before that time because I worked at Wool. I opened Woolworths lunch counter. Okay. I unwrapped the stove. You know, took the stuff off. Open. I was one the one to open. I worked at a couple of the schools. Mm -hmm. And all this guys. So you were and like a worker, you yeah. Were I was out in the community a lot. Yeah, okay. I was in the community, and it was a small community, mm -hmm. an, an organized. It wasn't a city, a town, or nothing. It was just a community. Mm. So they were watching you. The man yeah, said he had been watching that's you. That's what he said. That's what he said. You must have been running the city, Miss Candy. <laughs> I wasn't running the city, but I, I knew what was going on in the city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I ask you, uh, how much were you, you guys getting paid back then at the production mill? I believe when I started, I think it was a dollar and 35 cents an hour. Okay. I believe it was. I believe that's what I started. And then you had a list, certain type of yarn you were running, and a certain thing. Mm -hmm. You get so many hundred thousand yards. Or, or something, then you get 
right. my, my average was, uh, my average when I first started was $28 a day. $28 a day? Uh-huh. So you got, you got paid by how many yarns? How much I was Yarn you did. did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. So $28 a day back in the day, was that good money? That was money. Oh, okay. Most teachers were, you know, quite a few teachers weren't making that kind of money. Making that, okay. So what was rent back then for your rent and your mortgage? Uh, my mortgage, I, I, was, I was living here then. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have that much. Because we built that we built the house as we we paid for the house mostly as we was going, you know. Okay, so did you have mortgage like each month? Each month, I believe it's thirty five dollars. That's good money. So you was making that a day, and all well, you I had was, to pay. I was really making a little bit more than my husband was making. Mm. Y'all had good money. Thanks so much. That's good. You was a boss back then, Miss Candy. Yeah. Well, then when they hired started hiring other people. He would give me a lot of new people, you know, to train and show. You were training them on what to do? On my job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You did it really well. Yeah. I did that uh, 19, 1975, uh, I went to radio. And then uh, my mama was, my mama at that time was 90 plus, so she was here with me. So I, um, they understood I would be out sometime after the hour, yeah. and she passed. Sorry to hear. And I never quit. I just got I got time off, and then before I got back, mm -hmm. while we were back, they tell me it was closed. Mm -hmm. Or somebody else had bought it. Oh, okay. Somebody else bought it. So is it uh, a new name now? Is it still there? It no. It was uh, when it closed. It was. Fear press, fear press can. Fear press can, okay. And was it still the yarn production meal? It was still the meal, still. One of the largest name, uh, uh, textiles in the, in, the, in the state, in the nation. In the nation. Yeah, everything down in North Carolina, because you know, so much land and so much mm -hmm. space, a lot of big industries are here. Yeah. Um. Now, I, I heard in one of your interviews online, you told the interviewer that your parents were landowners. Well, Your we, parents were land owners. Oh yeah, my daddy had one hundred ninety six point five acres of land. Now, how in those days in the slavery time did your family was able to accumulate land like that? I don't know, but most of the black people from, like I said, go coming up Papa Tent Road mm -hmm. in the Caldwell Station that was in the how over to Highway Twenty One going from Charlotte towards Statesville. Mm -hmm. So so many of them had their own. Land. Wow. It was very prosperous. Yeah. Frank Lytle, you can go online and add the Lytles. Lytles, okay. Mm -hmm. And that's spelled L Y T L E. T L E, yes. So that 196 acres, do your family still have that? No, or was it yeah. sold off? During the time when the things were straight, straightened out, the Depression came on then. Okay. The Depression came on. Okay. And he, all, all the older people, like I'm saying, all the counties, of the black counties and the white counties of that of that generation, all of them are gone. Oh. And they're gone as well. Now, we have the grandchildren of the counties, mm -hmm. and we keep, still keep in touch with them. Robin Hayes was one of the favorite children from Charles Cannon. Okay. And I see him. I see him and hear from him monthly. <laughs> <laughs> He's always around. Is that your brother? No, that's Robin Hayes. It's a white guy. It's a white guy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so you have black and white cannons. Yeah. Yeah, they were uh, all over. Uh, and the light of, you don't know what happened to that land? Your father's yeah. land? Excuse me. Well, I'm I get this drink. I'm so thirsty. You don't I know what not. happened to your father's land? Well, like everybody else is. White people always got it back. I don't know how to, I don't know what, I don't know what, what was the issues. But they I took it? I don't know. No, they didn't take it. They just. Fixed it so you and you couldn't keep it. Oh, man. But I, we have pictures of land. That's a lot. That's like a little country. <laughs> we, we had our own school. Uh -huh. We had our own school. Lighter Grove School. There was a lot of them. Mm. And we had all my sisters, my only sister's pictures right in there. Okay. And she organized the first, she was in the organization of the first school in this area. 
Oh, okay. And this insisting that this book. Mm -hmm. Which book? The Canapolis book. The, the Canapolis book. The big one. Got some flat hats now. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sure I'm showing them your hats. It's okay. Take your time. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Y'all had a lot going on, and y'all, your family was a big part now, of this. This is this is Stevenson. That was that was old. That, that was the leaders of the. Let me see. That is Stevenson. Stevenson. Mr. Frank Stevenson. That was what we call it, Little Texas now. Okay. See, yeah, can Agreement for sale of land in the second option. John K. Patterson secured from Lucindy Sepulton and her son for nine acres of land in that portion of Rowan County, which is now North Canapolis. Mm -hmm. This Steppels, Steeplesons? Is it yeah, Steepleton. Steepletons? It's Frank Steepleton. Were the only African American landowners to sell land to J.W. Cannon for his new mills and village. Mm -hmm. Man, so black people had land back then. They, they, oh, yeah. they don't even tell you that in the history books. Well, I know you don't. But now Uncle Frank had over 500 acres. How do you get that? Does, it, does your slave owner give it to you? How do you get the that? Mor the morning when uh, the morning when uh, they announced it was May the 25th when the people in this area. Got the word about being free. Hmm. And Grandma said she was, now I lived, I was about 12 years old before Grandma died. Mm -hmm. And uh, Grandma said, she that morning, she was seven months pregnant. She was down the uh, old, the hot white, white people mm -hmm. live behind where Papa Chit Church is right now. Okay. And she was down there and got their mule. And she said, turn our rope, I rode it bare back. All the way to the years, mm. and got my got my child. Cause when she was when he when this baby was born, mm. the, the the slave owner took it from her, mm. cause it was his baby, and took her baby from it. And she had never and seen the baby didn't know her. She didn't know the baby. Mm -hmm. Now his picture's in there too. And this book? No, it's uh, in the, in the room. And they were neighbors of yours. Were they neighbors? You think I was back there in slavery time? I don't know. I'm telling you what they told me. Who I, was that again? Your uh the the morning that was nineteen I mean in, 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 in eighteen sixty something. So there were people that your 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 parents knew. Were there people your parents knew? No, my parents wasn't born. I'm trying to tell you now she was seven months pregnant with my daddy. Oh, so how did you know about these people? Grandma was sit there. Oh, grandma! Me, me, me and Kay used to sit there. <laughs> that was like a book to us. I, I can, you. I can, I can see her. She would tell you the story. Story. Okay. Right. Let me show you her. Okay. You want me to get it? You don't have to get you up. Don't if, have to. Oh, you don't have to get up if you don't want to. Go on. Just here. tell me where it's at. I'll go ahead and get it for you. Let me show you what I'm talking okay. about. She and got this on. Is your, this is your grandmother. Where? That you're about to get this picture. My, my, yeah, my dad's mama. Okay. That's my mama's mama then. Your mama's mama, okay. She was was she ever married? Oh, yeah, she ranched and buried. Let her. me tell the people we'll be right Ransom back. Because we got up from the interview. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back, guys. We're going to get Miss Cannon's uh, family grandmother's photo. We'll be right back. Yo, 
This is Miss Cannon's grandmother on her father's side. And this is her sister that started a school in Kannapolis. Here, this is by Charlotte. Yeah, I sure enough did. You sure enough did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Had a good hug. But it's good that you moving on without him, you know? Mm -hmm. I never dreamed I could. Well, you doing it. Mm -hmm. You strong. All right, we back, guys. We just want Miss uh, Cannon was reminiscing, and we got some pictures. This is her nep uh, cousin Frank, no, 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 Uncle no. Frank, from her sister, from her grandmother. And he went, her grandmother went back and stole him from, um... Uh, so she went back and got him. She was, he was free then, see? The, he was free. Uh, on the 25th of, of uh, May. This is him right here. Can y'all see? 1916. He was free. 
And she went and found him. She went and found him, okay. Put him on, left that morning, the sun was rising out in the east, she says. And when I got back in the sun, in the western horizon, with a baby on my, on that mule. Mm -hmm. And she said, I heard bareback. I didn't know what bareback meant. You know? But she was seven months pregnant riding a mule from Papa Tent all the way to Columbia, to Cornelius, North Carolina to get and got her baby. That's a big story because mm -hmm. Did she have a saddle? That's what I'm saying. She probably didn't have no saddle. No, that's what bareback is. You just oh, the, 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 the so back. you just holding on to the hair of <laughs> yeah bareback. That is dangerous. I said, did you know? You didn't know. Oh, uh -huh. I didn't she either. She got that mule and, and I got her in bareback. I'm going to, in seven months. Mm. That's a powerful story. Yeah, and, and she yeah, found yeah. him, but. Was he grown? He when was she, grown. She had to get, she found somebody black that was, was catchy. That knew him? Because he was running from her. Oh. Carriage, and they put him on the back of that. She, she got on him. She was on the mule. She said, you put the child in front of him. Mm -hmm. How old was he? When Ten she, years old. Ten years old. Okay. That's a, that's a deep story. Mm -hmm. That's a deep story right there. Now, Jerry Lyle, Jerry Lyle, he was worried about her because she was seven months pregnant. Mm -hmm. That was the... Jerry Lyle was the, was the husband. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jerry Lyle was the husband, and he was your grandfather. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Some powerful, that's some powerful stuff, because I don't think people realize back in those days what she went through to get her child back. That was mm -hmm. powerful. Mm -hmm. That's a mother's love right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see, because we get, I got so many questions about your family, but I'm going to just go in until um, kind of... Gonna... I'm going to have to be excused just a minute for a minute. Okay. Did you want to do it now? We'll take a break? Yeah, take a break. All right, let's take a break. We're going to take a break, guys, and stay tuned for part two. It's actually